Welcome back. Thank you for staying with the Hot 7 Nightly News. The outgoing Venezuelan ambassador says there are no hard feelings towards Prime Minister Alan Chastney over his March visit with the U.S. President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, she says there is still no change surrounding the civil unrest in her home country. Rochelle Gonzalez tells us more. When St. Lucian Prime Minister Alan Chastney paid a visit to the American White House upon invitation by President Donald Trump, this sparked widespread criticism across the region. One of the concerns raised by the visit was the fact that St. Lucia is an ally nation to Venezuela, yet the PM was visiting the U.S., a nation whose government placed multiple sanctions against the Latin American nation and announced that they don't regard the sitting president, Nicolas Maduro, as the nation's legitimate leader. On Tuesday, outgoing Venezuelan ambassador Leif Escalona was asked whether she had any issues with the PM's U.S. visit, to which she responded with a quick no. Every country is free to meet, to take different meetings with the president that they wanted to, they decided to do. And for us, it's, it's the, the sovereignty of each country, we have to respect that. But just we, we request, we ask for respect from every country, for all countries in, the, in this region. Meanwhile, Escalona said the situation in her homeland of Venezuela is no different and that there is still unrest. She said, on the other hand, peace is a major priority despite pressures from the United States. Always we are trying to, to explain to the world the different attacks that we are receiving directly from the United States, but we are still working to guarantee the peace in our people, to guarantee the peace in our country, and the government now is more stable. It's stable right now, and we will continue with our work. The ambassador said support from the Caribbean is still needed and highly important to her country. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. Archbishop Robert Rivas says the leaders should be held to high standards. The religious leader's words come following the controversy surrounding Dr. Ubaldus Raymond. When questioned about the standard of the island's parliamentarians, this is what he had to say. Every leader should be held to a very high standard in whatever level of society we operate, whether we are teachers, whether we are a, a, a priests, bishops, or in the, at the religious level, ecclesial level, or in at the level of politics or government or civil leaders, everybody has to have a standard. And the highest standard is always the ideal to aim at. Dr. Raymond, a government senator, is a widely known Seventh-day Adventist who has referenced his faith on numerous occasions. The Archbishop said when one strays from their faith, they should be open to whatever criticism comes their way. Everybody should be open to criticism. Nobody should be afraid. A real leader should never be afraid of criticism. We should always be open to it, open to discussion, open to questions, and open to building a better world. To date, Dr. Raymond is yet to speak publicly on the matter. In other news, Education Minister Dr. Gail Rigobert says the number of school burglaries is soon to decline. This, she says, is due to the deployment of police-trained security personnel to schools island-wide. Rochelle Gonzalez tells us more. Coming on the heels of a daring break-in at the Grosley Secondary School on Sunday, the island's education minister, Dr. Gail Rigobert, has revealed that the government is about to embark on an initiative which will ensure the decline of such incidents. Dr. Rigobert said cabinet has tabled for discussion, consideration and implementation a program that will address security issues in schools. You will notice that a few weeks ago, the first cohort of watchmen who were trained by the Royal Center Lucia Police Force were outfitted with their batons and uniforms and a second cohort will be trained but there are also other measures to be considered and implemented such as electronic security systems etc. Dr. Rigobert says she is fully confident that the moves being made towards better school security will play a major role in reducing the number of school break-ins. Yes, we train our watchmen, but we also ensure that we do have electronic systems as well. 
and in one school, in the case of one school, for example, we increased lighting in the area, which made a huge difference. So depending on the situation at the particular school, we will decide which intervention or which combination of interventions um, would be best suited what for that school. Included in the list of implementations is the use of closed-circuit television, CCTV. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. The National Council on Public Transportation is urging for a parking terminal in both the city and the north as the CCC gets set to roll out its parking meters. The president of the NCOPT says the overall traffic issues in the city and the north deserve careful and immediate attention and says further the council is willing to partner on determining the road ahead. Newly re-elected NCOPT President Godfrey Ferdinand says the organization is mindful that the government is taking steps to address traffic issues, particularly in light of the traffic congestion in the north of the island and within the city. The soon-to-be-installed parking meters in the city represent an important component of the vigorous approach to enhancing the city. Ferdinand says while the move is commendable, it does present an issue for bus operators. The council is in discussions to determine the best way forward for all affected parties. The only way out of this for us is either the terminals be built for us or we build our own terminal. Um, that means we will have to access um, land, maybe, or, well, purchase land and, and see where is best to put the terminal. Um, the position of the council have always been that we need a, a northbound terminal and a southbound terminal. Um, all, so we, we are now in discussion with the Minister of Transport uh, on that matter to see how we can best address these issues. As it relates to the traffic in the north and the current traffic pilot project that grossly bus drivers are railing against, Ferdinand says the rollout was not ideal, but the much-needed dialogue has been initiated. Obviously, there was um, something wrong in terms of the consultation um, in that before the sign was placed, there was supposed to be consultation, but that didn't happen. So now that they've put the sign, we, we ad the, the, there was the admission that, of course, there should have been consultation before, um, and that also that the sign is there for a pilot project. Basically, it's grocery and Morshi that's been affected, and any other plate that goes up north and want to use the, 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 the back road would have been affected in that area. Um, we are hoping that the, the survey um, or the pilot project would end soon, um, but we are also hoping that there will be further consultation in, on, on that matter. The NCOPT president says there are a myriad of issues facing bus operators and owners. The bus fare review is set to be undertaken and negotiations are ongoing with the Minister for Transport on the grievances of NCOPT members. Ferdinand says the council is working to advance the cause of bus operators and urges them to take up their issues at appropriate forums and to move away from personal attacks and the airing of personal grievances in the media. This is the Hot 790 News. When we come back, Senator Fortuna Belrose says she's not quite ready to talk jazz just yet. The former CXC registrar, Dr. Didicus Jules, says it's time for resolve on the CXC-SBA controversy. These stories and more when we return.